Praise the Lord. Okay. And I'm getting ready to violate my own rule. Turn the sound off. Aren't y'all glad? Well, some people need to hear it twice. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Good, so glad to have y'all with us tonight. And uh, wish we could have taken y'all all to, uh, it was really spur of a moment. I mean, we just, uh, Janie said, Mark Hankins is going to be down in Jefferson. How far is Jefferson, South Carolina? I, said, I don't know. <laughs> so she looked it up, and it was two hours and eight minutes, according to the Internet. And it actually ended up being about that. So um wasn't too bad. We got off work, got in the car, picked up Jessica, and headed down. And uh, got there 15 minutes before church started. Hallelujah. And... Um, Great service, Holy Ghost, old Holy Ghost type service, hallelujah. And then um, got to go back and eat with them and you know, so forth afterwards. And um, then got in the car and came home. We got, we got to the house about quarter to one and then had to get up next morning at seven and they had to work. <laughs> and... The night before that, I was working on church uh, end of month uh, processing, and I had a problem with, um, which I thought I had a corrupted program, and I spent two hours looking for the corruption, only to find out I forgot to hit the start button in the program. <laughs> I, I mean, I, when I saw end of row set, problem, you know, I'm thinking, what in the world? So I start looking for all the problems. And I'm just sitting there, you know, after two hours, and I got it open, looking at it, and I go, start. You dummy. Click. I, I you know, went out and found backups and, you know, tried to, you know, uh, remove the original and put the backup in, and it still was coming up with the same error. I'm thinking, what is going on? I know Dick never did anything that stupid. Never. No, okay. Because <laughs> my brain automatically went to, what happened? What, what corrupt? It just worked last time. You know? What, what corrupted? And I, I actually have had you know, um, D-Base corrupt. And I had to use a backup and replace it, and it worked. You know? And um, <laughs> I'm like, I just lost two hours of sleep. You know, two hours, yeah, wasted two hours because I forgot to hit one little button. You know, next time I'll make sure I hit the start button. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so I had six hours of sleep the night before, did all that, went down there, came back, got six hours of sleep, and then went to school the next day, uh, yesterday, and I'm like, Bam, bam, <laughs> beating your head against the wall to stay awake. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm glad. I know you didn't care a thing in the world about my programming. Uh, amen. But uh, we're glad to have you with us. Glory to God. All right. Father, we thank you for our service and our time together. We thank you that the Spirit of God is in each one of us and that he is the teacher. And he teaches us as we receive the word. And we thank you, Father, that you teach and use me um, to give the word. So the Holy, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're involved in both the giving and helping the receiving. Hallelujah. To help us grow in grace and grow in Christ and be the believers and part of the kingdom of God and the family of God you designed for us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, I can say we had a great time with um, Pastor Eddie and Allie Smith down there and, and having with Mark uh, Hankins. We... Um, we love his ministry, and, and honestly, this, this particular trip, there was a connection in my spirit. Um, I, I mean, I was, I was like really strong, that um, was, was really strong. So we're planning on going to his camp meeting maybe next year. Hopefully we can make it next year, get to his camp meeting. And um, because it was just, just a spirit, and I didn't go tell him, God, we made a connection. I was just in my spirit. I was being stirred. 
And I'm thinking, you speak to me because of the way you minister. It's, it, it's, it's in line with me. I mean, it's just, you know, and so it, it just spoke to me. And um, glory to God. Hallelujah. All righty. Um, we're talking about reclaiming the blessing through words. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, last week we talked about uh, what the blessing was, you know, the blessing of Abraham. It's the blessing of um, multiplication, multiplication and increase. Remember, the Weymouth translation says, and where God says, I sure that I will bless you and bless you and multiply you. And multiplying, I'll multiply you. And in blessing, I'll bless you. Weymouth says, of an assurity, I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. Hallelujah. Amen. We didn't cover that last week. I just thought of it right then. So glory to God. And so um, we don't want to live under the curse. We want to live under the blessing. You know, God's design for humanity is to live under the blessing. We're not designed to live under the curse. It was never intention of the Father for us to live under the curse. That was never his plan for you. That was never his plan for anybody to live under the curse. The curse came because of the fall. Amen? God, God had, had, had created blessing without cursing. The cursing came as a result and a consequence of the fall. But even in that, God did not want man living there. Amen? His whole, his whole plan was to return man, amen, back into the blessing. Glory to God. Because that was his design. That was his purpose. And um, so God made paths, first of all, a singular path to return man to the blessing. And now that we have, Christ has come and we've come into the kingdom, he has multiple paths of bringing you back all through Christ, but still there's paths he will lead you on to bring you back into the blessing if you'll follow after him. He wants you to live in the blessing. Amen. And so one of the things we have to do is reclaim our blessing. When we, when we mis, mis, uh, appropriate it, misconnected uh, with it, um, is to reclaim our blessing. And we talked about this last week, that we have a divine apparatus, our mouth. We have to start speaking what the Word says about our lives. Amen? Now, let me say this. Although there is a responsibility on your side, to speak the word, okay? It is there. It is your responsibility. It's still not difficult. God's made it easy. He sent the Holy Ghost to be your teacher, amen, to be the greater one in you, to inspire you. And he gave gifts. When he ascended up on high, he gave gifts unto men. Some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what? For the perfecting or maturing of the saints. Amen. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Now understand that you have your responsibility to meditate in the Word, and to feed on the Word, and to you know, act on the Word. But you're not doing it uh, without help. Because the Holy Spirit is the helper. He is the, he's the comforter. He's the advocate. He's the strengthener. He's the standby. Amen. Amen. He's your intercessor. How many of I covered so far? Anybody been counting? <laughs> huh? Well, there, I, I'm, I'm not sure where, where I am in that number there. You know, advocate, strengthener, helper, standby, intercessor, teacher, and helper. He's your helper. And so when we start, when we preach and we say, you need to meditate the Word, and you need to study the Word, and you need to get into the Word, remember there's a helper. There's a helper. The Holy Ghost is there to help you. Amen? He's the one called alongside to help. Amen? Amen? Um. You know where the Bible says, uh, we, know what, we, know what, we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself helpeth. Amen? Takes hold together with 
against. It's three Greek words. Helper. Takes hold together with against. He takes hold with you, together with you, against any pressures that are trying to keep you out of doing the will of God. Amen. That's who he is. Amen. And he leads us and guides us. Well, what, what did the psalmist say? He leadeth me by the still waters. Amen. Amen. He causes me to lie down. All the things of the 23rd Psalm that we love to quote so often, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Remember, the Holy Spirit's helping us. And so our journey is not to be this, I can't make it, I can't do it, it's so hard. Oh, I, I can't, it, it's all, uh, and just all the things. He's there to help. And if we will learn to trust the Spirit in us to help us, yeah, you got part to do. Amen. Um, Nathan comes comes over about night, about once a week, and says, uh, "Can you help me do something this summer?" And he's got some project. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> now I'm at the age now where my helping will be mostly instructing, laying a hand here and there. Okay. Um, but that's what he wants. That's what he needs. He just needs that little extra guidance or assurance he's going in the right direction. Uh, he borrowed my lawnmower yesterday, and the grass had gotten kind of tall in the backyard, and he ran over a tree stump. He calls me up, you know, hey, Dad, um, um, I need to bring the lawnmower back over, and uh, I, I bent the blade, <laughs> and it was like, He's just like, stay down. And uh, I said, son, now look at the lawnmower, see what brand it is, what, what, what size blade it is. And um, I said, don't worry about it. I'll buy the new blade. It needs a new blade anyway by this time. It's been three, three, four years old. So I'll buy a new blade. You go pick it up, and we'll, we'll put it on. Okay? And so um, he tells me what it is. I, I look at um, Home Depot carries, uh, carried it, and which was had to be ordered, or they carried the generic that would fit that brand. And so I said, Home Depot has, you know, this, go there, I get it, this is the size, and he needs, needs to have the butterfly opening in the middle, da-da-da-da-da. He brings it back over. Well, now I had kind of envisioned myself getting the, the socket out there and, you know, pull it, because thing, those things lock up so bad. You know, and then I remembered, I have a impact wrench in the back of my car, in the well with sockets so when I go to the camper I can I can put the jacks down and I can get the hot water heater thing off because that gets stiff from sitting out there in that salt and um, and so we put you know I said now you know here get some claws hold the blade and I go <laughs> I mean about two seconds it was out I like it and um, I went to the house to get something I come back he's already put it back on he just needed a little extra help to be able to do it. Once, he, you know, once I got it off, we got the blade in the right direction, um, and I went in the house to get something, come back out, he already had it on upside down, start cranking it up. Not upside down, back up and cranking it. Okay? Because he just needs a little help. And see, the Holy Ghost, he's not going to do it for you because it takes hold together with against. But he will help you walk this out. He'll guide you. He'll lead you. He'll undergird you. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. The greater one on the inside of us, praise God. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you aid. He'll give you instruction. He'll give you strength, praise God. He'll do, he'll do things in your life that position you for success. Amen? And he'll, he'll show you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you as the teacher to the things that you need to speak and to say out of the Word, even in your hours of despair or struggle or, or being overwhelmed, if you will go to Him, remember, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, the Holy Ghost comes in. 
See, in New Testament verbiage, we have to look back, think of the fact that the Holy Ghost is already in us. And so when my heart is well, overwhelmed, let the greater one rise up on the inside. Amen. And see, so then out of your mouth, as, as you let him lead and guide you and show and teach you, you know, well, you know, in order to you need to deal with this, you need to be saying this. You need to be studying this. Well, I don't know where that scripture is. You can download a inexpensive, if not free, Bible search app. Esword, e sword.net. It's one of the better ones out there. What I like about it is you can dope up the KGV with the plus sign beside it and it has all the Strong's Concordance definitions. You click on that little number beside a word and it'll give you the Strong's Concordance definition right there on the fly. On your cell phone. You're not having to go, well, I need to get, get home and get my Bible software. No, if you're somewhere you need it right then, you can click on it. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> right there on the fly. Amen. Um, you know, he'll, he'll help you. So don't think that you are, you know, you're left alone. Remember, what does God want you to have? Come on. What, 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 the blessing. Reclaiming the blessing. Okay. God wants you to have the blessing. God wants the blessing on your life. God wants to increase you. God wants to undergird you. God wants you to walk in victory. <clears throat> you are not designed for defeat. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, through the anointing. <clears throat> Amen? Through the anointed one and his anointing. Christos means the, anoint it means the anointed one. Messiah, Christos, the anointed one. I can do all things. How can I do all things through the anointing? Well, the, remember the Bible says you have the Holy Spirit. He, John calls the Holy Spirit the anointing. You have an unction. You have an anointing. Referring to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter, my helper. On him I do depend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me a hand and be three of you. I'll be leading worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. So think about it. We're talking about reclaiming that blessing with words. Where am I going to get the words? How do I get there? There's, a, there's someone on the inside. He was sent by Jesus, the head of the church. He said, I'll, see, Jesus, when he was here, he would teach them. He would say, now you need to do this. You need to understand this. And he would say, as the scripture would say, he would teach them. And he says, I'm going to send you another comforter. One after the same manner as myself. Glory to God. One just like me. Hallelujah. Except he's not going to be limited by time and space. You're not going to have to get to Jerusalem or up in Judea or over in Samaria. Amen. Amen. Or down in, you know, down in some other town, and, you know, out there in, 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 in the desert. It's okay. They need help, give it to them. <laughs> you don't have to go there to get to where Jesus is sitting in his physical body since he put on flesh. The Holy Ghost was sent to do just what Jesus did, but be unlimited where he can be. No constraints. So he could be somebody's comforter in Africa, somebody's helper in the Himalayans up on top of Mount Everest if you need be. He could be your strengthener over in California. He can be your advocate in, in England all at the same time. And he's doing what the master, the head of the church said he would do. And that is to be another after the same manner as myself. And he says, so I'll give you another paraclete. I'll give you another advocate. I'll give you another strengthener. I'll give you another teacher. I'll give you another standby. I'll give you another intercessor. Amen? I'll give you another helper. And the other one that I just didn't, I left out somewhere in there. Counselor? 
He's going to, he's there. So we have to remind ourselves that he's there. He was sent by Jesus, amen, to fulfill the mission that Jesus, to carry on the mission that Jesus had. Now remember, um, what did, what did, what did uh, Luke say at the beginning of the book of Acts? He said, the former treaties that I gave unto you of all that Jesus both began began to do. Amen? I believe Acts chapter 1, right up in the very beginning. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus both began to do and teach. See, he began, but it's not finished. Because as he ascended to the throne of God to take on a different ministry, He's no longer doing his earthly ministry. He ascended to the right hand of the Father <coughs> to be the great high priest over the things of God with the church. But instead of uh, him leaving, remember he said, I will not leave you comfortless. Now, but I'll send you another company. I will not leave you without a paraclete. But I will give another after the same manner as myself. So what happens is the Holy Spirit comes into the church to pick up where Jesus left off after redemption and now walks with the, king, with the family of God, the children of God, being all to them that Jesus is and was on the earth in the flesh. He's here in the stead of the absent Christ because Christ is now resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father, entered into his great high priestly ministry to, to oversee the implementation of the new covenant. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is here in the church doing that work. And so often we forget about the work of the Spirit. We leave him out. We always got this Casper idea. You know, he's Casper. The, he's not Casper the ghost. Ghost is really a bad translation. It's an English translation translated by the, the Druid faction of the King James translators. And they were very superstitious. So when they saw the Greek word pneuma, their, their superstitious roots went to the word ghost instead of spirit. So we get the Holy Ghost. Now, I love something like you say, I, I love that Holy Spirit, but there's just something about that Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, preachers like the Holy Ghost because it just preaches better. You know, somebody that preaches really good. And I get it. I, I, I get it because I'm, I'm being a preacher. I like that. Um, when I get to preaching, it just, it just it works better in your preaching sermons. But it also... If we're not careful, we, we kind of get on this idea. We almost get mystical about the Holy Spirit. Instead of realizing he's a third person of the Godhead. He was sent to carry out that job of the paraclete in your life. And so we're saying reclaim the, wor the word, the, the blessing through words. But then you go, well, what words do I need to speak? You got the Holy Ghost. Pastor Red doesn't have everything. He doesn't know everything going on in your life, but the Spirit does. So the Spirit does. The Spirit, remember, and He will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So He'll take the words of Jesus and bring it up. You probably heard some sermon at some point in your life, heard this scripture, and you forgot about it. And the Holy Ghost will reach in there and pull that up. And at that moment, you're going, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I needed. That's the exact word I had to have. Amen? That's what I'm in need of right now. Or he may use another person to say something to you. And that's no less Holy Ghost. If someone speaks 
by an inspiration of the Spirit. That's no less Holy Ghost than an angel showing up in your room with a flaming sword saying, Yea, I have been sent from the throne of God. And the problem with that one is you'll start waiting for the angels to show up all the time. <laughs> Amen. You know? Well, I need an Lord, I need an angel to show up and tell me what to do. Not really. And if that does happen, glory to God, don't, don't you start building your life on waiting for an angel to show up and tell you what scripture next. Because down on here, amen, right down in here, there, the greater one's already residing. The greater one's available. Now, sometimes through our own personal dullness or inability, haven't been trained to hear the voice of the Spirit of God or don't really know what we're doing, he'll, he'll use other methods to get to you, to teach you. He will teach you. I remember... A number of years ago, we were at um, Winter Bible Seminar at Ramah. And um, it's back when Dad was still here. And, you know, and of course, we fill the, pla we fill the place up. People be in overflow rooms. They, they, take the they had a choir loft back then. They haven't, gotten rid they haven't made the stage any smaller. They just took the choir, the choir uh, whatever they call them, platforms out. You know, and they use it for, they, they, they kind of use the um, modern stage lighting and backgrounds and, you know, TVs and, you know, you know, whatever to, to, sh to lessen the size of the stage. But they used to hold a thousand people on the choir loft. So you could have 6,600 that sat in the seats. They put about another thousand out in chairs because the, the aisles from front of, between the first row of pews on this platform were ginormous. And they still had to leave enough room for the, you know, the, to, to minister to people through there. And then a thousand in the in the uh, choir loft, and um, you know Brother Copeland would be up there, uh, you know those the kind of guys like that be sitting up there. And um, now what I'm going to share with you is, he will teach you to know his voice. Okay. And so we're sitting out there. I'm on. If you look at the Raymond stage, we were over there. Uh, you know, there's like two big center sections, and then you had an angle section, another angle section, and then a side section. And they, they were a lot, they were, and then you had the balcony, okay? We were over here on the end of the aisle, and uh, about the fourth row back, third or fourth row back. <clears throat> and uh, we're sitting out there, we've, you know, we've been worshiping, Brother Higgins come up to take, to take the service. He's standing up there, and, the, you know, uh, and he's still, you know, glory to God, praise God, whatever. And I hear the word of the Lord. Or Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. And I'm sitting out there going, now, Lord, you're about to get me in trouble. Because if I head toward that platform to get up there to get to Copeland and give him a word, the Rama Usher uh, Secret Service police are going to take me out. Because I've seen them in action before. Back in... Um, um, when I was in school, Brother Summerall came. Demon-possessed folks came out to hear him. Why? Their heart wanted to be, they wanted to be free, and so they would show up in the meetings. The demon didn't want to be there, but they wanted to be free, so they show up in meetings. Remember a story Norval told one time. He said he was, uh, <coughs> he had done a service and came out and was out sitting down eating somewhere, and this girl came running in. And said, uh, Brother Norval, Brother Norval, Brother, Brother Norval, I need for you to pray for me. I, I'm, a, I'm a lesbian, and, and I want to be free. He said, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to come out in Jesus' name. And she got, she, the demon came out, and she started going, oh, thank you, Brother Norval, thank you. Oh, praise God. He says, now, if your lesbian lover wants to come up here and get this, I'll get her set free too. And that girl took off and ran. Hello? So anyway, we're, brother, I, I know where I'm going. Don't worry. I, I haven't lost it. And so Brother Summerall's preaching, and he, demons would just come out of the woodwork. And he won't scare no demon. I mean, you know that, that song that Keith Moore wrote, Demons are afraid of me. Demons are afraid of me. They shivered at him. You, you need to get his, his book, um, Bitten by Devils, or the, all the other, somewhere. It may even be on all. It'll, it'll send chills up down your spine. About a girl in the Manila, Philippines, uh, 
it made him a national hero in the Philippines because they played that whole thing. This girl crying and bite marks appearing on her skin and her disappearing and coming back. They were playing on national radio and asking, can anybody come help? Can anybody help? And he was there, and he went, and when he walked in, he said, I, I, got, I got to go. He, he had to go fast and pray. Until he got, until he, you know, this is how he, this, you know, he, it's also how Jesus taught me to cast out devils. And he came back a few days later and cast the devil out of her. And he became a national hero. I mean, he's still revered in the Philippines today. 55, 50, 60 years later, he's still revered. And um, so Brother Summer, I was preaching, and I'm sitting uh, maybe seven, eight rows back, and this guy, big, tall guy, gets up and starts walking right toward the platform. And he's walking down the aisle. He's walking right toward the platform. And about the time he gets right here, ushers came out of, I mean, they, they just appeared out of, I mean, they were beamed over or something. And just took him and just directed him right over here. <laughs> so I knew what the Rama, what Rama secret police would do if I went for the platform to get Brother Copeland a word. So I'm sitting out there thinking, oh, God. How am I going to do this? And the word of the Lord has come unto me saying, it's from Brother Copeland. It's like, of course, your head's going, who do you think you are? And I'm answering back, yeah, who do you think you are? You arrogant, lit, thinking you some little snot-nosed Ramacrad, you know, who do, who's not really sure the difference between your head and the hole in the ground. Amen. Go go give Brother Copeland a word. And I'm sitting out there just a struggling. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus. And it's strong on me. I know the Holy Ghost. I mean, it's all over me. I mean, I'm burning with this word on the inside. I'm like, oh, God. I, what do I do? Oh, Lord, you have to open the door. Are you sure? I'm having this battle out there. And I've been out here struggling for a little while. And all of a sudden, Brother, Copeland, Brother Hagen turns around and says, Kenneth, come over here. And Brother Copeland gets over there, and Brother Hagen turns to him, and begins to prophesy exactly what's in my heart. What's been going on in that five-minute the battle with the Lord. And later, as I was praying, I said, Lord, what was that? So I'm teaching you to follow my spirit. See? And I'm, I'm like, whew, whew. Oh, I need some water. I sweated this one out, man. <laughs> Amen? But see, he was teaching me to follow the Holy Ghost. And I learned in that moment something about knowing his voice that has given me great assurance over the years. When I, ju I just know it's God. I just know it's God because he proved it out. Amen? Amen? Now, I know people that would have tried to give it. We were in a service back when I was at Ramah. Um, it was prayer seminar, 1981. Now, back then, we didn't have a winter Bible seminar. We had prayer seminar and Holy Spirit seminar. We had two different weeks at two different times of the year, and we had alumni week at a different time. Now, I wasn't a graduate yet, so I didn't get to go to that one. But we had prayer seminar in the winter, and in, like in February. We had the Holy Spirit seminar before Christmas, and Brother Hagen taught both of them. And then somewhere in there, they merged them together and called it Winter Bible Seminar in February. Okay? This was back during prayer seminar. This was my, so it was 1981, February of 1981. And um, <clears throat> one of the board members had come to some part of it and flew back home. And Brother Hagen asked him, said, you, you know, are you sure you should go? Oh, yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, you know, he, he's like three times he asked him, you know, about not, basically, about not, without telling him, don't go. Because it was bad weather in the area. They went up, they flew, and they crashed, and they got killed. And um, so he was gone for a couple of days to take care of that. And Sister Wilkerson was there. She was for a lot of it. 
Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you think Billy Brim is something, you should have heard Sister Wilkerson. And that's who she sat under. She sounds like Sister Wilkerson. And uh, the glory. <laughs> I mean, she got that for being around Sister Wilkerson. <coughs> Sweetest, I mean, most precious saint. I'm telling you right now. I got to talk to her on the phone one time because we were trying to get her to come to church, and she passed away before we could work that out. And, um, but anyway, um, so Brother Hagin came out, and she, she was in a service, and um, we're all kind of gathered around after the, after the night service up around the platform. This was in the, not in the Rainbow Bible Church, but in the old, was now Rooker Memorial Auditorium, the original church auditorium for the school. And uh, we're all kind of gathered up there and uh, just kind of worshiping God and praying, you know. We've got to have more times like this. We've got to have more times where we just gather and we, we come and we just we, we pray and we just get into the spirit together. And so we're up there praying, and Brother, Brother Hagin's up there on the platform. He says, Sister Wilkerson, I believe the Lord wants to use you. Well, see, when you get around people of the spirit, they don't get uptight. Silence doesn't bother them. Waiting on God doesn't bother them. It's the young whippersnappers who think if you got two seconds of silence, you got to do something. Okay? And so we sit there, and it seems like an eternity. I'll be honest with you. It seems like forever. Because we're all waiting, Sister Wilkerson. Sister Wilkerson. And I'll be honest with you. I've heard I've been in when she started prophesying, and, and literally the hair on the back of your neck would stand up. You think, oh, my God, this woman walks with God. <laughs> and um, and uh, he just, would you, he, and Brother Hagin's not uptight. He's just waiting. See, he knows she's supposed to do something. She's waiting until she knows she has something. And they're not moving. They're just going to wait. We've got to learn to be comfortable in the silence of his presence until we hear what he has to say. Because there's sometimes we need to quieten everything down so we can really hear what he's got to say. Our minds get shut down. Our thinking would get shut down. And all that gets shut down. I'm way off, kind of off my subject matter, but that's okay. This is really good. <laughs> this is all free tonight, too. Hallelujah. And uh, so we're sitting there, and we're sitting there, and we're sitting there, and we're sitting there. And all of a sudden, my sister Wilkins is over there, somebody over here. They start going, hey, brother, brother Hagin said, hold that. Now go ahead, sister Wilkinson, whenever you're ready. <laughs> yeah, see? And about less than a minute later, and oh, he stopped. She was tongue talk and prophesy back and forth. That's how she does it or did it. And I'm sitting out there going, oh, my God. Your knees are getting wobbly. That You got chills, and they're multiplying. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And she gives this word, and you're just, oh, 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 my Lord. See, in the glory of his presence. Amen. And see, just like brother, the Lord taught me how to hear his voice, I'm in that meeting, and, and, she, and I'm learning by being people of the Spirit, being around people of the Spirit. We need the Word. God, we need the Word. The Word will keep you from getting flaky. We got a lot of flakies out there. So we need the Word to bring them back in. If you'd seen me on Monday night, you would have wondered what I was. I was drunk as a skunk in the Holy Ghost. Janie took a picture. I said, you better not put that on the Internet. I looked like I had been down at the bar. <laughs> I'm sitting there. <laughs> oh, my. I mean, I'm talking stone off your feet, drunk in the Holy Ghost. I mean, I, all I could do was go. <laughs> That's after I acted crazy, fell on the floor. They drove me back up into my chair. They lay hands on me again. I fell over on Janie. Couldn't, couldn't talk. Hallelujah. We got to be around people of the Holy Ghost. 
and of the Spirit. And we got to learn the ways of the Spirit. And he'll do things like that. He'll, he'll give you Holy Ghost services. He wants to bless you. But see, there's not all, the end is not just to bless you. It's to teach you. And he's teaching you to recognize him. So when he comes to Jerry and says, duck, Jerry doesn't go, huh? As the building blowing up goes by him and takes him in half because he's saying, huh? You know, when the, uh, the Kenyan embassy was blown up, there were a bunch of people there that, that went to Jerry, Bi Jerry Seville's Bible school. And they were on their way to the embassy to go to work. And as they were walking, the Spirit of God said, hit the ground. And they flattened to the ground, and the building blew up, and the people standing up beside them go killed. Just blew them away. But they were on the ground and went over top of them. So they may have been dancing, shouting, laughing in church, but they learned him. And when they learned him, he was able to say something to them that made absolutely, why would you go be walking down this sidewalk on the way to work and just drop to the ground? You don't have time to cognitively reason out why or you're dead. Can you imagine somebody going to heaven, getting up there, going to the Lord and saying, well, Lord, why didn't you do something? And he would say, I did. I told you to duck. But you didn't listen. Amen. It's like the guy when he's in his house and the flood's coming. And uh, they come out of the house and say, you need to evacuate. There's a flood coming. They say, no, the Lord's going to deliver me. <laughs> okay. Now the flood comes in and gets up, it's up to the second floor. They're looking out the windows. Somebody comes by on a boat and says, um, you need to come on with it. No, the Lord's going to deliver me. Finally, I have to climb up on the roof. And somebody comes by on a, um, another boat when, when it's just to the edge of the roof and says, come on, hop in. We'll, we, we'll get you out of here. No, the Lord's going to deliver me. And finally, they're up on the peak, and a helicopter comes by and drops down the rope and says, no, the Lord's going to deliver me. And then they drown. And they get to heaven, and they're upset. Lord, why didn't you deliver me? I sent you two boats in a helicopter. Amen? See, we, we put in our brains how it has to look. But when we learn the ways of the voice of the Spirit, the way we think it has to look, we'll get changed. He'll say, do something. You'll go, okay. Now, I can't visualize why. I don't understand why that way. But I know His voice. I know Him. Amen? So, in other times when it came time for me to prophesy or to give a word, I know that voice. Because we had the battle at Raymond Church one night over that voice. Amen? Um, our, our, our friend of mine that, that has been to the church a number of times in the past. I was, uh, we, he was in our church one time, and, and I came down to him, I said, the Lord says... You've been walking, you've been, you've been going in this circle of, of uh, people, churches. He said, but I'm about to expand you, and that circle's going to get bigger, and it's going to get bigger. Now, I don't know if y'all know who Joe Morris is. That was him. See? That word came, and now he's walking in that. He's going all over the country. I mean, he, he went from going to like smaller churches and small places. Now, it wasn't Ed. It wasn't me. It was, it was the Lord wanted to say something, and he used me. I knew his voice. Hello? And now he's walking in that. I mean, he's just walking in big things. God's using him in all kinds of, I mean, he's always been used in, in, in the um, uh, gifts of healings and word of knowledge. But now he's walking some different things in a bigger circle, in a bigger circle. Now, had I not... And I've, I've prophesied over people who were more popular or more famous or more known than I am. And that's okay. 
I'm not in the competition to be that, you know. But if the Lord says do it, I do it. Amen. Now, he's going to have to use a crowbar for sin, if it's in a big meeting like Pastor Hagen's running or something, you know. Well, yeah, we're just not going to jump up there on that platform because the Ramah Secret Service police are still there. Okay. And they've even made them undercover now. They don't wear the coats where you know who they are. If you don't see the little thing behind the ear, you don't know. Okay. I'm making a joke about it. Hallelujah. Where am I? I'm at Expedition Church of the Triad in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, so we got off on all this because the Holy Spirit's your helper. I said, the Holy Spirit's your helper. And he will help you get to the place where you walk out the blessing of God. And he'll show you what to say. I remember Brother Hagin saying something one time when he was on the bed of affliction. And uh, he heard a voice say, um, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. And he kind of let that get away from him. And that happened several times. And finally he went, who said that? And the voice said, the 90th Psalm? Or the 91st Psalm, which is it, 90th or 91st? Which is it, guys? Y'all remember? Huh? 91? He said, he said, the voice said, the 91st Psalm? And so he had to look it up. Sure enough, there it was. Well, who was that? It wasn't the devil. The Holy Ghost told him. And that's why you, when you recognize him, he can tell you something you don't even know. I'll show you things you know not. He, the Word of God says God will show you things that you know not. Or great and hidden things you know not. That you know not. And then what do you do? You take that, you get in the Word. You say, oh, yeah, there it is. Right there in the Bible. That's the Holy Ghost. He gave me a word. Hallelujah. And there were no yea, my sons, and oh, thou, my daughters, and, you know, thus, oh, the ancient of days says. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I mean, if somebody offers that, if God used somebody and they prophesy that way, that's okay. But it also can be a manipulative tool in those who don't know God's voice to give credibility to what they're saying when it's nothing but their flesh. But when you know the voice of God and your spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit that you're a child of God and then he speaks to you, you recognize even if it's through another vessel, oh, that's God. Like Brother Hagin said, <coughs> um, he he gone over to the church, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, Baptist then ain't much different than Baptist now. They ain't into them tongues. All right. So he came back to the church he was in, <coughs> and there was a there was a, a like a retired minister or whatever in the church. And he said, "Where you been?" He said, "Well, I was over at the church over there, and got filled with the Holy Ghost." He said, "Now, Kenneth." You need to stay away from them people. He said, why? He said, because them, them speaking in tongues is of the devil. Well, he said, well, if they're of the devil, so is the whole Southern Baptist denomination. And that guy sort of like a motorboat. He said, yeah. He said, the same spirit that bore witness with my spirit, that I, I was a child of God, is the same spirit that filled me with the Holy Ghost and caused me to speak in tongues. He didn't have anything to say <laughs> other than he received the left foot of fellowship from among the Baptists and came over the, among the Pentecostals. Are you here? So, glory to God. Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Woo! Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Now, we're going to have to get, get us a building. we got rows so we can run. I like to get run over Monday night. I was halfway out in the aisle, and a runner came back. Woo! <laughs> Mark Hanks was sharing how his mama, when she was 80 years old, was still running. 
He said it was slower. It's more like a scoop. He said, and she run by, and they had dignitaries coming, the mayor and all these people showing up in his church, and she'd come running by, and she, she'd be running by, and he said, if you didn't, if you would run, she'd grab you and take you. He said, but she, she'd run by and say, it's the Holy Ghost! <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. The winds of change are coming. I said, the winds of change are coming. The winds of change are coming. And with those winds, those winds of change are bringing inspiration, are bringing the glory, are bringing the, the breath of God to transform men and women into new people. Not just people who aren't saved, but even born again people <coughs> will be transformed. By the winds of change. As the breath of God blows into this place. And the glory is manifest in this place. And the outpouring of the Spirit begins to take place. And oh, the outpouring will be. Oh, 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 oh. You'll be saying, I can't take any more. Lord, I, I, don't know, I don't know if I can take, give me more. I, can, I don't know if I can, oh, but just give it to me anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so much so that in the next year, you won't even recognize yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And great joy shall be in the camp of the family of God. Hallelujah. 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 <coughs> <clears throat> Can you say amen? Amen. amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Pray. Oh, ha 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 ha. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Hallelujah. When you, just, when you start looking over into the things of the Spirit, you don't understand everything, but you can hear the sounds, the sound of joy, the sound of victory, the sound of change, hallelujah, the sound of the workings of the Spirit of God in the body of Christ, hallelujah. My, 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 my. Mm. So let us be full of joy. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad. And with hearts of expectant faith, reach out and say, Bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Teach us the ways of the Spirit. Teach us the ways of your purpose. Teach us the ways as those winds of change come. I receive. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. I, ha, 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 ha. I receive. I receive the change. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, glory. And when the Lord turned again to captivity of Zion, we were like them that sing. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Whereof they said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Whereof the Lord has done great things for us. Therefore, we're glad. We're glad. We're glad. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, we need, we need to grow. Because, you know, there's people like Mark Hankins, we, we, would, we wouldn't like to get in here. But we need to grow. Amen? So that, you know, and I, I believe a connection is being, you know, we, we've, we've met and been with him at, at dinner several times over the years. He's such a down-to-earth person. 
First time was back in when um, um, the girls were at Ramah. After one of the Winter Bible Seminar services, we got to go back with, back in the back room and eat after the service. And we're sitting at a table by ourselves. Mark Hankins comes over and sits with us. Then Sister Lynette comes and sits down with us. Because, see, I had become one of her first Facebook buddies way back when. And, um, and so we got to sit there that night with him and talk with him. And he's just, it, was, it was just awesome. Well, then a couple, three, four years ago, we were up in Virginia uh, in Front Royal with a church. He was speaking. We, we were going, that was our year we were going to ride the entire Blue Ridge Parkway starting Front Royal down. But we found out he was going to be there, so we slipped. We, we went an extra day early so we could at least get on one service. We went in, the, and the, um, the pastor's daughter recognized we had to be like ministers or something. I, I have no way of knowing how that is, but they recognized it, okay? And uh, we, they took us as soon as we walked in the door and took us down front on the second row right behind the Hankins where they were sitting. And that night, so we, know, we, didn't, know that, we didn't know that pastor. We didn't tell him we were coming. We just, we just came because we wanted to, we didn't care where we sat. We wanted to be in the meeting. And, um, well, then that night we were invited to come down for dinner afterwards with them and uh, got to spend time with them then. And then this meeting, the pastor I haven't seen in years is a Rama guy. He, he just hadn't been to meetings. We hadn't been in the same place. And so we went down. I called him and told him, I said, we're coming. And, uh, he said, well, you told me about ushers when you come in that I said that you, you uh, put you in seats. So we got on the third row, two rows behind the Hankins. And all through that service, something was going on in here. I'm thinking, oh, my. There's a, connect, there's a divine connection being made. <coughs> and uh, we got to go back and eat with them again. And, uh, you know, after the service, after I got sobered up, <laughs> Pastor Eddie asked me if I, was, if I could drive home or not. And... Um, the divine connection was being made because he stirs something in me. I'm, I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling it tonight. Yeah, I connected on that. Yeah, it, ooh, it's coming back. <laughs> Remember that old commercial, the chicks are back, the chicks are back, you know, with the skin brace or whatever, you know, the anointing. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, I know there's a time and place for him to come. And we're going, to get, we're, we're going there. He'll come. He's going to minister here. Hallelujah. Because he'll set you on fire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You'll feel 10 years younger after you get some more sleep. <laughs> I needed some sleep that next day. Hallelujah. I, I got in the prayer service last night. My voice was shot, and I'm sitting there going, I'm going to sit here and listen. Y'all are all going to pray. Now, I listened to all of it. I didn't go to sleep. I listened to all of it. Hallelujah. I was in for the whole thing, awake. But glory to God. Things of the Spirit. Greensboro needs a work of the Holy Ghost. A genuine, deep work of the Spirit. I, I have taught you guys and taught you guys and taught you guys, and you know the Word. And we'll keep teaching, but we're going to preach. We're going to have the move of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The things are going to be released. Mark Bazee prophesied over me. The first time he came to our church, that was in 1988. And it was all a happen chance that he ended up in our church. And I say that from a natural position. It was the Holy Ghost. So he was going to a church down in Ashboro. The pastor only did Sunday morning um, services with guest speakers. And uh, he said, look, we're, we're only going to have them for Actually, Sunday morning and Sunday night. We're only going to have them for Sunday morning and Sunday night. But he wants to do more than one church while he's in town. Would you be interested in having him? Well, I knew who Mark Bazee was. He's the one that was one, one of the girls was going to marry while they were out on the road and bought the, bought the invitations and the wedding dress and went and received the letter saying, we're not going to marry you. I bind that in Jesus' name. And he didn't marry her. And so he came, and we had Holy Ghost service 
for three nights before they had before people were having Holy Ghost services, before it was popular, before it, before it was a thing to do. And um, the next two or three times he came, he, he had kept a journal what he preached in every church. He said, Ed, he said, every time we come here, we get the same thing. Holy Ghost service, Holy Ghost service, Holy Ghost service. Amen. And that was a door that led me to being able to preach in the Bible schools all over the world. That connection. Now, so he's in that first service, and he begins to prophesy to me, and he starts talking about that these, these wells of deposits God's made in me, there have been deposits made, deposits made, and you'll be, you will draw them out. And I've had to meditate on that over the years. What are those? And then as I did, I really began to understand. God's had me in different places with different uh, depositor, deposits made in the depository. See, I grew up Pentecostal. And we would go down to the altar in the 60s and kneel at the altar, and the old saints who were the children of the Azusa Street era people would come up and pray over you. And your old Pentecostal prayers are different. Oh, God, use this young man for your glory. And you, know, you feel heaven coming down and just getting all over you, you know? And you, you don't know what, you don't know if to get up, get up and run. I mean, you just don't know what to do. Because this old saint, I can still Brother Paramore's voice praying over us. And Sister Shirley Jones, old Pentecostal female evangelist. Man, hallelujah. And then we had, you know, I was in the church and Bishop Nye from South Korea, Bishop of the, the South Korean Pentecostal Holiness Church, he didn't lay hands on you. You, you didn't fall into the spirit. He knocked you down. Wham! You're going over one way or the other. And then I went to Ramah and sat under Brother Hagin. And, you know, and Brother Copeland's laid hands on me. And Brother Hagin laid hands on me. And uh, Ed Dufresne's laid hands on me. And uh, Brother Summerall's laid hands on me. And all these different ministries and all these deposits are coming in out of heaven. And see, they're in a, they're in a depository for the express purpose to be withdrawn in the right season to do the work of God. They weren't from me, for me. They were in me for a people and to go where God wants us to go. So when's he going to withdraw them? I don't know. But I can tell you this, it's getting closer. I said, Brother Buddy laid hands on me and ministered over us. Sister Pat, Brother Hagin, Brother uh, Pastor, Brother Hagin's daughter. Pastor Hagin's laid hands on us. Different ministries from different walks, different giftings who've walked the world. I think you know, Brother Summerall. Um, I'm trying to wrap up so we can get out of here. The hour, the the hour and a half of power and a half. Okay. Half an hour plus an hour in the hour of power. There we go. The extended hour of power. But the last time that I saw Brother Summerall live, um, we were out in California. Now, here's what happened. I'm going to make it short. I'm going to abbreviate this. We had bought a compact all-in-one computer. It had the big desktop CRT monitor with the, the, C, the CRT attached to the bottom, you know, with floppy drives in it and stuff. And we had bought one. Well, with it, we got two companion tickets on airline. So we decided, well, Janie's brother's out there. We want to go see him. We're going to go to California. So we book our flights to uh, Ontario Airport. So we can go end up going to see our brother. We're going to rent a car. We're probably going to do some stuff. Well, we get Mark Brzee's newsletter. He's going to Temecula, California, to hold services with Ed Dufresne and Lester Summerall. In Mark Brzee. It didn't take us long to figure out what we were doing. So we set up the first week to go to the meeting. So we show up down there, and Brother, Brother Ed, you know, he knew he had been in our church. Brother Ed, it's good to see you. It's all Mark and Janet in the parking lot. They didn't know we were coming. And, um, well, we got to go back at night with the ministers meeting. But Brother Summerall got up the last, last night he preached, and the last time I heard him, I ever heard him in live in person. And said that he's getting to as many ministers as he's could. He said, 
Brother Wigglesworth laid hands on people trying to impart into them before he went to home to be with the Lord. He said, I'm trying to get as many ministers as I can. And so he would say, come up, come up here in the line. If you're a minister, if you are not a minister, do not come up in this line. This is for ministers only. He came down and laid hands on us to impart. He was imparting a spiritual deposit out of all those years of ministry. It's all in here. It's all the gift that I am. It's all in there. It's been placed in there supernaturally by God. God placed it to bring it out. I said that was early nineties. So here we are. It's you know thirty years later. But don't worry about it. When the fullness of time comes, there's a fullness of time with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, glory to God. All right. Did y'all get anything out of any of that? Anybody blessed? Yeah. Woo! I'm, I'm done there about preaching myself happy. Glory to God. If I had sister so-and-so on the front row with a hanky, I'd been gone. <laughs> I was at African American church one time, and this old lady, I know she was three days older than the dirt. And I was preaching on the blood of Jesus, and she stood up, and she just started going her hanky like this. And it was like sick them to a bulldog. The, the hanky, preach. The hanky, preach harder. The hanky, get after it. The hanky, don't let up. The hanky, put it to the floor and keep going. And I did. I mean, I went. And then another African-American gentleman stood up, and he was four days older than dirt. And he grabbed a hold of the end of the pew or chair and just took one foot up and down. And that's all he could do. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh, we had us a service. Hallelujah. God, the winds of change are coming. The winds of change. And I've seen it. I've looked on the horizons of time. And I have seen this wave of the glory coming. And it's like a mighty tsunami. I didn't know the word at that time, so now I, I, I can better describe it. It's like a mighty tsunami of his spirit bringing this wave of revival to the nations. And it will flood inland. And it will wash away in a moment decades of the stratagems and designs and all the things that the enemy has built will be washed away in a moment. If that glory comes forth. And I've seen it. I've seen it. In the spirit, I've seen it. I prophesied it in Czech Republic. Speaking in Czech, which I don't know. And one of the students was bawling and came to the people and got an interpreter and said, he's prophesying in Czech. What did he say? I see it. I see it. I see it. The glory's coming. The glory's coming. The glory's coming. Let's get ready. I said, let's get ready. Let's draw it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's receive the offering. If you're watching now on the internet and you want to give, go ahead and give according to our electronic giving, PayPal. Um, give at expeditiontriad.org. Cash app, dollar sign, expedition triad. Hallelujah. But that's, you know, don't, don't stop there. Come. Come to Expedition Church. There are winds of change coming you want to be in on. You want to be there. You want to be in on it. You don't want to miss it. There will be people who miss it and they'll get in later. But I want to be at the initial. And we on the shore when it comes, comes ashore. Hallelujah. I don't want to be way out there in the end just get my toes wet. I want to be caught up in that wave and carried into the things of God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and they give. Thank you, Father, you open up heaven's windows and you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe, receive the in-house offering. 
Those online, thank you for giving, go ahead and give. Hallelujah. Send it in. Um, don't forget to pick up. If you've already filled up one of the Pregnancy Network um, baby bottles for change, there's eight more out there on the table that are empty. You can go ahead and pick those up if you want to and do another one. You've got a week and a half. And like I said, go to the bank, give them $10, and get $10 worth of quarters and throw in there. That's a good starter. Huh? Yeah, ten dollars worth of quarters fit there. Easy. You might even get. You might be able to get twenty in there. <coughs> yeah, but you know their their whole thing was the ten dollar, you know the change thing. Hallelujah, um, you know. So, but yeah, you can actually take and, and and send it electronically. They got a QR code you can send it electronically. Okay. So anyway, yes, Rita, you can you can go get ten dollars and stick in the bottle. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Y'all love Jesus? We love you. Jesus loves you. Come Sunday expecting. Amen. What's coming? The winds of change are coming. Hallelujah. You need to be, I mean, going home at night, the winds of change are coming. Look, I mean, look at your spouse and go, the winds of change are coming. I mean, if you don't have anybody in the house but you, go look in the mirror and say, the winds of change are coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It'll be glorious. Hallelujah. We love you. All right. Those watching by the internet, thank you for being with us. We love you. God bless you. And First John 5, 4 says uh, that what serves born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.